Hello and welcome to Spanish Basics. In this module, I'll be giving you an introduction to verb tenses. So let's begin. Now the subject is broken down into the following topics. First, I'll give you an introduction to tenses. I'll follow that with the seven simple tenses and give you a Spanish versus English comparison. And then following that, there'll be definitions of the seven simple tenses. Then we'll get into the seven compound tenses and I'll give you once again a Spanish versus English comparison. Following that would be the definitions of the seven compound tenses. By way of introduction, Spanish verb tenses are often a new concept to many native English speakers because English conjugation is often not taught in a systematic way. Additionally, verb conjugations are usually dispersed in Spanish grammar books, which makes it difficult to find and review verb tense construction. This module contains an overview of all the Spanish tenses in a few slides. To get the most benefit from this module, please review module four, which speaks to verb conjugation. To begin, in Spanish, there are seven simple tenses and seven compound tenses. Simple tenses mean the verb consists of one word. Compound tenses means the verb consists of two words. Now listed below are the seven simple tenses. Once again, where the Spanish verb consists of one word, and to the right, I give their English equivalents. So let's review this table, starting at the upper left. The first Spanish tense is el presente de indicativo. In English, the present indicative. Now, the first person singular example using the infinitive to eat is I eat, or I do eat, or I am eating. Next is el imperfecto. In English, the imperfect example is I was eating, or I ate, or I used to eat. Next is el preterito, or in English, the preterite. The example is I ate or I did eat. Next is el futuro, in English, the future tense. The example is I shall eat. Next is el condicional, o potencial simple. In English, the conditional tense. The example is I would eat. Next is el presente de subjuntivo. The example is the present subjunctive. Excuse me, the English equivalent is the present subjunctive. The example is that I may eat. Next is el imperfecto de subjuntivo. The English equivalent is the imperfect or past subjunctive. And the example is that I might eat. Note that there's a caret next to I ate for both the imperfect and the preterite. That indicates that there is a slight overlap in the usage. Now, below you have the definitions of the seven simple tenses. A presente is the present indicative. That's an action or a state of being at the present time. An imperfecto, the imperfect, is an action or a state of being that was continuous in the past and may continue to the present. El preterito, or the preterite, an action that was completed at some time in the past. This tense is not used to describe habitual or continuous actions in the past with no specific beginning or end. In such cases, the imperfect tense is used. El futuro, the future tense, is an action or state of being that will take place at some future time. El condicional, or the conditional tense, is an action that you would do if something else were possible. El presente de subjuntivo, the present subjunctive. This is where the subjunctive is used to express doubt and uncertainty. The present subjunctive covers both the present and future tenses of the subjunctive. En el perfecto de subjuntivo, the imperfect subjunctive. Again, the subjunctive is used to express doubt and uncertainty. The imperfect subjunctive is used for the past tense of the subjunctive. Now, these are the seven compound tenses. The, once again, the compound tense is where the Spanish verb consists of two words, and to the right is their English equivalent. Now, starting at the upper left, the first Spanish tense is el perfecto de indicativo. English equivalent is the present perfect indicative. Now, the first person singular example using the infinitive to eat is I have eaten. Next is a plusquam perfecto de indicativo. In English, the pluperfect or past perfect indicative. The example is I had eaten. Next is el preterito anterior o preterito perfecto. This is the past anterior or preterite perfect. The example is I had eaten. Next is el futuro perfecto. 
in English, the future perfect or future anterior. Example is, I shall have eaten. Next is, el potencial compuesto. In English, the conditional perfect. Example is, I would have eaten. Next is, el perfecto del subjuntivo. In English, the present perfect subjunctive. Example is, that I may have eaten. And lastly, el plus cuam perfecto del subjuntivo. In English, the plus perfect or past perfect subjunctive. The example is that I might have eaten. Note the caret next to I had eaten for both the past perfect indicative and the preterite perfect. That indicates there's an overlap in usage. Now, these are definitions of the seven compound tenses. El perfecto de indicativo, the present perfect, is used to talk about things that started in the past and which continue or repeat in the present. It can also address the recent past. El plus cuam perfecto de indicativo, the past perfect, is used to talk about a past action that happened prior to another action in the past. It is often used to talk about what a person had done before something else happened in the past. Now, el preterito perfecto, the preterite perfect, it describes an action in the past that happened immediately before another action in the past. This tense is ordinarily used in formal writing and less often used in spoken Spanish. El futuro perfecto, the future perfect, is used to talk about something that will have been completed at a certain point in the future. It can also indicate probability or what might have or could have happened. El potencial compuesto, the conditional perfect, describes an action in the past that would have happened but did not due to some other event. It can also be used to express the probability of an action that has already been completed. El perfecto de subjuntivo, the present perfect subjunctive, is used to describe actions that are connected to the present, as well as actions that will have happened by a certain point in the future. El plus cuam perfecto de subjuntivo, the past perfect subjunctive, is used to talk about the hypothetical situations in the past, past conditionals and past actions that precede other past actions. Now at this point, we're almost at the end of this module. As is my custom, I like to end with a refrain. And this one is, una ocasión perdida no vuelve más en la vida. A lost occasion does not come back in life. I want to thank you for viewing this Spanish Basics module. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Bye now.